The Flood. I've spent countless videos pumping up their intelligence, describing the tactical genius of grave mines and the virality and deadliness of a flood infection. However, when you really think about it, the flood's failure in Halo 3 just cannot be ignored. Let's recap. Ancient history has the Flood fighting a war against the powerful Forerunner Empire, and winning, until at least the firing of the Halo Arrays, which destroyed most of the Flood within the galaxy. Thousands of years later, as humanity and the Covenant established themselves within the galaxy as major superpowers, the Flood saw several limited re-emergences, including when the Spirit of Fire encountered the Flood on Ethan Harborage, when they were unlocked by the Covenant on the Halo Ring Installation 04, and most notably notably when they were rediscovered on Installation 05, where they had been in perpetual war with the Sentinels after a breach in containment. This final infection is the one we're most interested in. Although locked in a quarantine zone, the Flood on Delta Halo, Installation 05, had collected enough biomass to form a grave mind. As the Arbiter, acting of course for the Covenant Hierarchs, pierced the shield around the containment zone, the Flood were able to spread freely across the ring, also taking control of the UNSC frigate in Amber Clad. Things escalated from here extremely quickly, and Amber Clad was crashed into the holy city of High Charity, which was quickly overrun, producing perhaps the largest Flood force in a hundred thousand years. This was all made worse, of course, by the chaos caused by the Covenant Schism, which saw the Brutes and the Elites in a full-fledged war. The taking of High Charity gave the Flood a movable base of operations, a mobile Flood Hive, which is obviously incredibly dangerous due to what we know about how quickly a Flood infection can spread if they have access to FDL technology. What's more, the Flood also took control of several cruisers and most likely other assets, like dropships. As the Flood fully secured High Charity, it's very likely that even Cortana, who had been left aboard the station, would have been unable to stop them, as she was now fully in the clutches of the ever-growing Gravemind. At this point, High Charity was changed dramatically by the Gravemind, and we get the following quote from a Halo Bulletin. The Gravemind did become aware of Earth's portal, and thus the danger that the Lesser Ark still posed to his plans. As soon as he arrived in the Soul System, his modifications to High Charity were far-reaching both to keep the facility functioning after the departure of the key ship and to better serve as a mobile plague ship from which he could sing victory everlasting in a galaxy consumed of thinking life. The technologies of the Covenant were advanced far beyond their original functionality by the application of esoteric precursor science. However, because of the desperate bridging maneuver necessary to bring high charity to the Ark, the station lost its structural integrity. So the main takeaways here is that high charity was heavily modified such that it could run without the Dreadnought which had previously been powering the city, and it had access to advanced bridging maneuvers, and presumably just a faster than normal slip space when not used in an emergency situation, or if High Charity didn't need to travel as far as, say, the Ark. High Charity first made a slip space jump to the Soul System, and in particular Mars, presumably tracking the signatures coming from the portal. However, most likely because they realized they were running out of time, the Gravemind didn't go to Earth and instead made that special precursor bridging jump straight to the Ark itself. I think some of you are probably starting to catch on to the Flood's major mistake here, which when playing Halo 3 isn't immediately obvious. And no, I'm not talking about the fact that the Flood crashed through a Covenant cruiser, which seemingly was about to stop Truth from activating the array. Although, let's be honest, that's also pretty dumb. But no, that's not it. Why did the Flood spare only one single cruiser for propagating the Flood infection outside of their mission to the Ark? We know they travel to the Soul System. Sure, the Halo Raid did have to be stopped, no one can argue that, but why not send more cruisers, or hell, even space-borne infection forms, to other planets? They were in the Soul System even, and near Mars, perhaps very near Mars. Starting an infection on that planet perhaps isn't your primary goal, however, it's natural for the Flood to reproduce and want to spread. Mars was a very highly populated UNSC planet. You're telling me no Flood could be spared to start the attack there? If they had, once the firing of the Halo Array was prevented, as of course it was, the galaxy-wide attack would have had a foothold and actually been well underway. At the very least, they could have spread out the infection on Earth, drop more cruisers, spread out some banshees, whatever. Now, one reason that's typically given for the limited scope of the Flood attack 
after the leaving of High Charity is that the elites did have a blockade around the station and only one cruiser was able to escape. But I mean, come on, that makes no sense. High Charity was a massive Covenant station. Even if we accept the fact that perhaps they couldn't get access to another cruiser, we know that the internal bays would have had access to thousands of personal vehicles, perhaps tens of thousands. And we know that directly from the Halo Encyclopedia. I mean, look what would happen when the Flood secured a UNSC frigate. The first thing they did was take dropships and spread out across High Charity. We know that they are exceptional at repairing vehicles just so they can further propagate. I find it very unlikely that they couldn't find a few slip space capable vessels, you know, put some spores on them and send them on their way. Alternatively, at the Ark, we also see that the Flood have these sort of orbital insertion pods. They could have at least used those near Mars. What's more, at this point, the Flood had actual knowledge of how the Halo Array worked and they knew that one ring was destroyed. Thus, at least I think this, I'm not 100% sure, a firing of the entire array would not cover the entire galaxy. If I were the Gravemind, I would have stuck Flood within a ship, sent them that way towards any inhabited or at least livable planet within that ring's firing arc. That of course would have only been a temporary solution, but it's still at least one failsafe. How might this play into Halo Infinite? Well, remember, the roaming High Charity was the first time in a hundred thousand years that the Flood were truly free and mobile within the galaxy. I've said repeatedly that one of the greatest, if not the greatest drivers of the Flood is their desire to further propagate. That's why it makes no sense for them not to have left some sort of infection outside of their mission to the Ark. There's no way that they would commit all of their forces in a single attack. Now, it's obvious that whatever Halo ring is being visited in Halo Infinite might also have a Flood infection, as it seems all of them did, but alternatively, perhaps the Flood actually did manage to get some infection forms onto another planet. Perhaps during the Guardian Crisis, they will be discovered, or maybe they'll hit a critical mass such that they can somehow leave the planet. I really don't know. That of course is just one theory, and it's always bothered me that somehow Cortana managed managed to trick the Gravemind into sending all of his forces to a single spot so they could be eliminated by a tactical halo pulse. It just makes no sense. That however is just my opinion. I'm curious to hear what you think. Anyway, that's all for lore. Let's now take a look at the question of the day. So once or twice a week, perhaps more, I will be taking these questions directly from patrons, and that's what I'm doing today. Yuckus asks whether I've thought about putting my talents into something other than YouTube. And to be honest, I don't have a lot of other creative talents. I'm an analytical person, I'm an avid reader, but I'm not a great writer, I've got no sort of skills in filmmaking or art. That's why actually looking at a pre-established universe and breaking it down fits best with my personality and with what I'm good at. That being said, I've got lots of fun ideas for games, but I mean, ideas are a dime a dozen. Thank you very much for asking that question, Yuckus. If you guys want a better chance of having your questions answered by me, feel free to join the Eckhart's Ladder Patreon, even a donation of $1 will allow you guys to comment on my threads and give suggestions. Of course, you can always just leave a comment with the hashtag AskEck. That's not going anywhere anytime soon. Anyway, until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. May the Force be with you.